Welcome back and today we are going to be taking a look at the SU-25 SM3. Now I was originally going to make live commentary on this thing because it should be absolutely horrendous to fly. And I mean it kind of is but if you are looking at every video on the market right now. Everyone is praising this thing for the absolutely insanely long range missiles. The KH-38s. Now we are going to be using the TV variants, the MTs. Because the laser variants can actually be chaffed. And you can see me... Uh, Launching them all over at the start of the game. That is not how these missiles are going to work. We are going to get some kills with them today. They are kind of funny to use. But overall this thing is still a subsonic plane at 11.7. That has two R-73 strapped to its wings. And of course the GSA-30. Which is still my absolute favorite gun in the game. And if you need a reason for why. Well I have your reason right here. It hits extremely hard. It's extremely easy to aim. And overall... I have no faults with it, other than the fact that it doesn't have the most amount of ammo. Now this thing also has MAW, which means that it's going to flare for you. I turn that off because it's basically always going to be flaring. And your balls will be depleted before you even actually see any missiles. The MAW is extremely sensitive and I believe that you can actually tune it a little bit in the options. But essentially everything you see, missile has been launched on the screen. It's going to be flaring and spamming chaff for you. And it's just an absolute waste. So you just have to... Turn on like a, a keybind and you should be able to turn it off with a singular press. I'm not going to go too in-depth on the flight performance of this thing. I think it's pretty clear. Instead, we are simply going to look at the absolute bullshit I managed to pull out of my ass yesterday. No, this plane isn't really great. And yes, I also got a few games where I just died without doing anything. That's just kind of the nature of this plane. Can't really go around that. Yes, this is cherry-picked content. But there really wasn't another way to make this video remotely interesting. So this is the first game where I actually ran the TV missiles. And the TV ones are simply just so much better. And let me give you a bit of a demonstration. This FRS is indeed flying. And he is not just flying straight at us. He's actually going to turn out a little bit. And I launched the missile. I don't have to worry about it. It is fire and forget. And you can see by the trajectory... That is looking pretty solid. Just like I was just after that managed to hit. This was the first game where I ran the MTs. And I thought, god damn, I'm gonna have an absolute meme video on my hands. Unfortunately, it was a little bit of a fluke. Fortunately, I managed to record it. So, we slammed the FRS out of the air. We also R-73, the other guy. And you can tell there that a little bit of cloud coverage is going to absolutely ruin your laser pointer. And I probably could have switched on over to the TV camera. But I'm not really too familiar with this, so instead I try to hug the ground, pop up and go head on with the JA-37. Now I actually kind of get shafted for it, go head on with the F-16, get hit again. I'm simply way too slow to really dodge anything and arguably I stuck it a little bit too long. And I shot the missile at the flares, so that was never going to be tracking. However, all of them are flying away and the F-14 is engaging me. So we are now going to have a dogfight with an F-14 and... No, this is not a winnable fight, but we're going to do it anyway. So we merge with this guy, and because we are a lot slower, we are actually able to kind of stay behind him. Now, he is going to be pulling harder than us, he has more energy than us, and we are going to be using our flaps a little bit excessively to just make sure that we have the ability to kind of stay within his loop and kind of hold our position. We do not want to end up in front of this guy, because the second that happens, I am going to be dead. And yes, I'm still run running the missile on my wing right now. Because I had a feeling that I could get away with it. So, I'm just going to be carrying it around. It's a little bit of training weight. And uh, maybe in the future I'll drop it off. But for now, I feel kind of confident. So, I'm just kind of keeping it on. Using the flaps to float into him. And then he makes a grave mistake. He essentially has me stalled out. And instead of going up again to deny me any kind of shot. He actually goes down. Which gives me the ability to dive a little bit after him. Pick up some speed. And have the ability to pull up into this shot. Now if I miss this I am completely boned. Uh, luckily this thing is piss easy to aim. And we shoot off one of his elevators. And this is going to hinder him. Just like that missing flap is hindering us kind of. And you can tell that he now is actually going to just stand on his engines. And I'm trying to pull after him because I have to. I cannot try to disengage. If I get him on my 6 I am dead. I'd rather trade a shot like this. Than trying to fly away from it. Because then I simply die. He gets on my 6. I'm going to try to pull up over his nose. Drop the air brakes. Drop the throttle. Kind of float above him. Try to make him overshoot. Because if he doesn't overshoot. Uh, this is over. If we get on equal speed. I just simply die. I need to be a little bit slower than him. 
And I can do that. And luckily, because we shot off one of his elevators, uh, we are now able to pull directly into the shot. Yeah, you can see that this plane doesn't like this speed with asymmetrical lift. So I'm trying to uh, kind of stabilize it. We managed to do so. A little bit of a top gun maneuver in the middle of the dogfight. And we are back to basically pitching up after him. And because again we shot off one of his elevators. We just get a lot of position very easily. Because he doesn't pull as tight. And then he tries to energy trap me like a prop. Unfortunately the Jesus Age 30 is still piss easy to aim. That one flare also wouldn't have saved him from an R73. So all in all if you have someone energy trapped. Don't stall in the guns. It's kind of bad for your health. Then my teammate tells me to go RTB. But you know. F-16 might give me a little bit of trouble, but uh, yeah, now nah, I'd win. So this guy is flying over here. It's an F-16A. He does not have the radar missile, so I'm not as bound to a low altitude as I would be normally. However, I want to be a little bit slower than him, and I want to be underneath him so I can merge properly and have the ability to just absolutely clown this guy. He shoots an A9L from like 29 kilometers away, so I already have a feeling that he's just going to stick the head on here. So I'm going to be pre-flaring. I'm going to try to stay low. And we're just going to shoot some rounds in the head-on. And again, it's pretty easy to aim. Crit is left wing. We are underneath him. We are going to pitch up straight after him. I should have trotted up right here. But I forgot because I just committed lobotomy. And I mean, he's turning around. I don't have much fuel. Uh, I'm just going to stick it. He's going to take a little bit longer to get the shot here. I should have sprayed a little bit harder. But luckily, we managed to absolutely reel him out of the air. And that is 4 kills in the SU-25. So we are back on the Vaini Cock map. And I always try to stay a little bit behind the bombing bases. So that I can lock people up with the TV guided missiles. And shoot them in the handle. Doesn't really work out this time. I'm a little bit too far forward. Luckily the F-14 has no idea that I'm there. And I just kind of orbital strike him with an R-73. Here comes the FRS. I'm not being locked up. So I can actually push this head on a little bit. And he just pulls out. He does have enough thumbs to actually pull out of the way. But I'm not sure if this guy has enough thumbs to use a radar missile while flying at the same time. So we are just going to send it after him. Because I have a feeling that he is going to turn around the second he is done bombing on that base. Uh, a little bit unfortunate here with all the uh, cocky pillars. Because well they get in the way of my massive dildo under my wings. Now he is turning around. He is flying towards us. And because he is just not reacting in time. If the R-73 gets within like 800 meters in the head-on, it is simply going to slam you. And if you are coming around the, the mountain like that, then well, you better make sure that you pre-flare it. And I mean, do I really have to say anything here? He overshoots, he's much faster, and uh, we take his entire plane apart. Back to the hangar you go, and on to the next target we go. And then for the last kill of the game, we are going to be engaging a MiG-23. He's already in a 1v3, so we are basically just going to kind of stay here, be overly aggressive to make sure that we get another kill. There's really nothing about this. And also to have a little bit of downtime to talk about this plane, because I get the, the comment, it's not the plane, it's the pilot, when you call something bad or when you call something good. This is not about the pilot. Well, it, it is about the pilot, but it's mostly about the pilot that's behind the stick of the enemy aircraft. Now, this MiG-23 MLA... Really couldn't really do anything here. It's against an F-16 AJ which already kills him on his own. As well as an FRS that is desperate for grinding. And then he has a lobotomized frothing at the mount attacker SU-25. That really wants to get more kills than 3. So overall really nothing he can do. I'm not making fun of him. Instead let's take a look at his F-15 explode to an MT. Unfortunately it's a bit of a steal. Oh, it finished off actually so I didn't steal it. I didn't get many hits with the MTs because well... They're anti-ship missiles. What did you expect? And then we do the absolute brilliant strategy of dropping your R-73s off. Because, well, I don't know. I'm just having a lobotomy here. The MiG-29 is full sending after me because he wants that easy kill. Luckily, he's sending it so hard that he's losing a lot of speed. But I can use this opportunity to break off, get into the terrain, and also disrupt the flight path of the Mirage 2000. Let's make sure to use all these cocks here. And we can now make sure to keep this loop tight. He doesn't have an actual advantage because he actually can't cut my loop off. Because there's mountains in the way. He gets cleaned up by the FRS. He became the easy kill that he tried to kill. And we are now just going to turn into the Mirage 2000. Because he just killed someone else. He's kind of out of position. And I noticed that red wingtip with some white scribbling on it. Let me tell you, there can only be one. We set him on fire. We take his plane apart. And we go... Into the next game. And there is a little bit of an issue with this camera. The first one is you can not lock people from all the way across the map with it. At least not reliably because it likes to break lock sometimes. And there's the other one. P-51 
people will simply just fucking de-render if there's no one near them, which makes this strategy a little bit annoying. I wanted to sit behind the bombing bases again. They all get spotted a little bit too late. And if this was with the old camera system, where you would be able to spot people from 25 kilometers away, that was absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, they removed it. And now this is not nearly as effective. And we notice that the Mirage, whether it's an F1, 2000 or even a 4000, I have no clue. But he wants us dead. And I'll save you the one and a half minutes of me simply flying away because he's trying to close the gap. But I'm trying to make this a secluded 1v1. So I turn around, I go head on with him, he starts locking us up. So I go to the deck, dodge the missile, make sure the pre flare so we don't get magic to it. And he runs away. The Mirage is absolutely petrified by the chance of the Asher 25 maybe ever getting remotely close to getting a chance to kill it on the mirage in this case so this guy is just going to be running away he doesn't even attempt to re-engage me or whatever use its energy i don't know why and then the f20 shows up and it becomes all clear he wanted to turn this into a 2v1 he's already locking me up with an f18 engine it is an aim 7 so we are going to go to the deck dodge the missile turn into the f20 he's flying towards this side so i'm going to be turning in also to deny the angle of the Mirage. And at this point, I'm just going to be focusing the F20. Because I already know that this Mirage is not going to try to engage us. Trying to stay underneath him. He just broke Mac. Trying to make them crash. But instead, he is simply going to disengage. And I'm going to cry for him. Because I'll never see him again. F20 comes in. Massive advantage that he has here. It's both in the position as well as the altitude and speed. But instead he actually goes so fast and he turns it into a little bit of a sizzle. So I'm going to try to get over his nose and I'm going to try to get behind him. And now I can't really throttle drop because I'll just kind of stall in his face. So I want to make sure to tighten it up a little bit. And I'd rather sacrifice speed by turning tighter and that's what the flaps are for. So we get behind him with the flaps. It's a little bit of a temporary boost as you might know if you watch the flap video. And because of that we managed to just take his plane apart. Thank you very much to the Mirage F1C for leaving his friend to die so that I can have a little bit of a 1v1. Thank you all for watching and you'll see me in the next one.